like what sci-fi sci-fi is all about too because like the it is super far-fetched which uh jenna has like some stuff about that too but like on a global level but actually that's what science fiction about is about is like taking something that is a reality at some level and turning it into something bigger and so what you said like this is actually for small islands they will be underwater and they will have to move like and they already are so i like that like grounding it in reality that's like duh <laughs> i like that yeah like being able to find the real life in this you know climate fiction story and it's it's full of it you know some of the science doesn't quite work out but like you said overall this is already happening what about you Tavari? did you get how far did you get so i am uh, almost to the middle of the savage earth part but the very few things the very first and few things that i noticed that one this came out in 2002 okay so in 2002 they are whosoever is writing and, and you know they're not scientists non-science people are writing about swallowing sea completely this is a full global warming scenario the rise of the sea level everything then they're also talking about inhabitation of a completely new place and i couldn't help but make connections because this whole year i've been working so closely with mark chandler uh-huh and he shares with me that when we got the new administration so not making a point about politics but uh -huh. sharing what he he what their perspective went from researching historical data to focusing on exoplanets that's that's what nasa's focus is these days researching and comparing data making uh, uh finding out more about whatever we have for exoplanets that's like, he does. that's his bread and butter these days so wow. so here's this completely fictional fictional scenario and and then on one hand there's this political thing we don't believe in this we don't agree with this on the other hand you have scientists working on exoplanets well why would you even need an exoplanet if everything here was just perfect mm -hmm. why would you need you know you would probably be just like happy and content here you to double up your efforts so i couldn't help but think about these things that if if all the assertions that scientists have made are false or they are not true, then why do we even need to put money in exoplanets or anything like that? You see? Yeah. We would just, we could just use that money to paint White House once more. Uh. <laughs> you know, they, you know make, make, we can come up with various projects. Forget education. I'm not even going to say that. We can come up with various other projects that we can spend that money on. But there is a serious, the whole group right now, Mark's whole group, is seriously researching about exoplanets. Wow. And it, yes, so this is one thing he, he says, that that's what I do every day. That's my bread and butter with this administration, all of Earth. And I am just on wondering why. You know, why do we need this? But anyway, but yeah, those are my... Ex extra extra thoughts that extraterrestrial thoughts extraterrestrial thoughts yeah yeah so but i couldn't help but wonder and about the uh, did there is i don't know if you know her but her, asher asher i think that was her name but there is a tribe in florida that's already been displaced by loss of land due to sea level rise <laughs> yeah, there's um, Jenna. Do you have a slide? Did you put a slide in about that? Yeah, the um, 
So Jenna had done a little stuff just on like how this did relate to reality. Yes, 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 right. yes. Yep, there, there it is. Isla de Jean. Isla de Jean, as you would say it. Yep. So, yep. There it is. And so, so these, I wonder how much the fictional writers get influenced by these stories that are usually suppressed uh, by whatever politics that goes on here. Hmm. Well, I think an interesting part um, of this is that the fact that it was written in 2002, I mean, honestly, yeah. 15 years ago. Um, yeah. It's happened since then. Um, and yeah, this the tribe that lives um, kind of on this area, of, it's Mississippi Delta in Louisiana, um, about $48 million to um, you know, because they're completely displaced and to, to resettle elsewhere. And they've been there since 1830. Yep. And they actually, the sad thing about their story too is they were, they were resettled there. They're mostly members, are they Cherokee? They are members of a Cherokee and Choctaw. Yeah, of Cherokee and Choctaw Indian tribes. And so they've been displaced now three times um, in history. So it's, it's a very tragic story in general, but it's the first like U.S. climate refugees. Although right now I'm sure we've got a large percentage of the population of Puerto Rico trying to get the heck out of there. <laughs> as well it, so in india we had climate refugees as early as 2000 because that's when i left to come here for my for my post uh, for my masters and in 2000 we had a huge wave of refugees from bangladesh but our politicians are so corrupt that they actually like these refugees coming in and they want to assimilate them as quickly as possible because then they become a water bank so whosoever helps them assimilate, they will vote for that party. So they do not acknowledge it that we have a mass wave of people coming in. They just quickly assimilate them. It's like, oh, sure, 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 sure. Go here, go here, go here. Because we don't have like a, a ser series of steps that you have to take to gain citizenship in India. So, and they take advantage of that. So, yeah. Yeah crazy yep it's uh, it's related if it's in benefit of the politicians it works <laughs> if it's not then it's it's you know it's a question and people talk about it it's been hushed over issue forever as long as i can remember wow. in, yeah in india it's like we we don't talk about the immigration from bangladesh <laughs> um sarah what did you think about like how as a science teacher would you talk about the science part of this because it's something that um yeah how would you talk about that or how would you integrate it um i don't know i kind of like how you brought in like the reality and talked about the island that's already flooded and that's um, really good i i, know, I feel like i kind of did that within this last week we um started with um, an inconvenient truth with Al Gore, and moved on to then one of his TED talks. So taking you know a snippet, and then we um, just got done watching an inconvenient sequel. So then bringing in all of the data that you know Al Gore has, and then looking at you know other people's perspectives. Um, and now we're going to start the. It was a Frontline um, premiere about a week ago on the war on the EPA. Um, mm -hmm. I heard so, that was really, really good. Very good. I saw it when it came out and I went, oh, this, you know, I'm going to show this to for my Earth's climate class. Because just looking at those other perspectives and what other people are claiming, you know, that, you know, this isn't true, this isn't happening, da, 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 da. And it's just like, how can you not tell with all the evidence, all the data we have? It's just heartbreaking. <laughs> so it's nice with, you know, the um, curriculum I have from climate generation with all the data there and then just kind of letting the kids reflect on it and you know what's your opinion on this you know what were your 
um, con you know, preconceptions coming into this? Have they changed any? Um, have they been supported? Do you have any new views? You know, and then kind of relating it to where we live. Um, one of my students, her dad works at a um, power plant over on in Wisconsin. And just her coming in with, you know, personal stories she hears from her dad and whatnot about um, them trying to clean things up or be um, a little more, you know, greenhouse savvy and clean, you know, whatnot with cleaner emissions. So, yeah, I wonder uh, what, who he works for, because it's um, interesting. To, do you know what utility he works for? Um, it's the Dairyland Power Plant in Alma, Minnesota, or Wisconsin. I wonder if that's just like one of the um, municipal level yeah um, because it depends on you know who um who you're who they work for because a lot of the utilities are really trying to oh yay another job <laughs> um <Yeah>. hello <laughs> um some of the utilities are like total deniers but like our utility here in the twin cities excel is is like has a plan and they're moving towards renewables and they have like a very comparably like strict trajectory compared to other places mm -hmm. so some of them it's like totally on board and some of them aren't yeah oh, yeah <laughs> he's supposed to be watching a movie with his brother <laughs> well i sent my kids out the door with for a dog walk <laughs> we have to advertise next round next month it's family friendly jenna we have to put that in the family, family friendly, friendly book club yeah. yes, oh, family yeah. friendly and and our bring your own beverage yeah. your own beverage uh pre-yoga pre pre dinner yeah, pre yeah. Uh, talking of data Hey, do you, have, do you have, um, show, can you talk about the C stuff you looked at, Jenna? Because I was interested in that and I didn't look at it very steeply. Like sea level rise stuff? Yeah, I mean, I didn't go into too much stuff. I found several articles that I can um, share on the chat or I'll just do a follow-up email. Um, just kind of put this stuff out here. This first one um, was kind of interesting. Um, it's from National Geographic, actually, and it's an article um, called What the World Would Look Like If All the Ice Melted which if you look at other articles, it's pretty much physically impossible for that to happen. Um, but it is in, in, interesting to kind of compare what the book said to you know, what real, literally could happen. And the article talks about a 216 foot rise in sea level is you know, kind of the max at what that would be. Um, and then it shows the shoreline for each continent and what that would look like. So that was kind cool. of an interesting one. Um, and then we have another one. There's a number of, of other, this is just CNBC um, talking about um, the amount of climate refugees and it defines it, individuals forced to leave their homes due to changing environmental conditions. Um, but the amount that have already been displaced, so this article saying 26 million people already and what that figure could be by the middle of the century. Um, and then talks to the um, actual sea level rise amount that, that they're thinking about and then the, um, the cost of that and just how countries are just not prepared for this yet, um, really because they thought it was going to happen in 100 years from now and it's, it's already happening. Um, and that's, I think, related to what you were saying, Sarah and Kristen, about, you know, these island nations, you know, yeah, maybe the entire uh, country of Scotland, um, they do mention Glasgow Cathedral uh, in the book, will not be um, completely covered, but, you know, several island nations are already going through that. So there was a number of, of different articles and kind of each one, you know, talked about the same, <laughs> same thing related to the sea level rise. But a lot of interesting things out there and, and to be able to you know, read this book and then talk about, you know, what's happening right now already and what is, is thought to happen in the future. It's, I think, a great, you know, teaching tool. There was another quote or a, a part of the book I just wanted to read real quick because it was, it was one of my favorites and, and both Kristen and myself marked this when we read it. 
so loud. Um, but it's on page 179, the top of the page, um, and it's the tree people. Um, one of the um, Gorbel is talking to Mara and said, we lost our city because of that too. Um, they're talking about um, how, how the various people have lost their city. So um, Candlerig says, human beings burned up the power of the earth, not just the trees, but so much of the goodness of the planet that the world grew hot and the great ice mountains melted and flooded the lands. She lived through it all. And then Mara says, our ancestors stole our future. This is a really powerful um, paragraph um, between those two um, characters that I think you could really dive into more deeply with students. So can, can I, do you guys, uh, isn't there a lawsuit somewhere happening? Uh, yeah. So the children's lawsuit? Yes, yes, yep. yes. So, so that would fit very nicely with this idea of our ancestors stole our future. Or is that, is that lawsuit, I don't know much about it. Is that just against the government? Or is yeah. it like bigger messages like all of us are responsible? It's like a, they're, they're suing the federal government. They're essentially suing the president. Because um, okay. uh, Obama was the first, I put a link to the, it's Our Children's Trust is the name of it. Okay. Um, but they were first, they were suing Obama and then with the new administration now it's moved. But it's moved up the, um, it's, I think there's a trial set now. And mm -hmm. what's remarkable about it is um, they that it has moved forward I guess and like there's all sorts of things that originally you know when the government was pulling down all the websites about climate change they had an argument in that that was actually hiding evidence yes um, and like so it's a really interesting thing to follow like how that's so, working. Uh, the way I got into it is because looking for resources for our, our curriculum I, Jim Hansen, Jim Hansen is... His, his granddaughter, I think, is, uh, is part of the suit. Okay, so he just wrote an article in support or providing more evidence to that lawsuit. And that article somehow came to me as, okay, so it, because it's focused on temperature, increasing temperatures, doesn't talk about CO2, but just establishes that temperatures are indeed increasing. That, and so I'll share that article with you. Cool. And uh, uh, Jim Hansen is uh, uh, Mark's boss, like Mark's kind of like uh, mentor. Oh, that's right, because he's at um, Columbia now, right? Yeah, in yeah. the climate thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so he keeps on talking about it and I could notice the name and I, I saw he's retired, I think, but he, for this lawsuit, he's actively writing pieces. Yeah. Cause he left NASA. So that's why he can do whatever the heck he wants to do now too. Yes. But. Interestingly, Corey wrote an, uh, an activity uh, for the rate of change of temperatures and then he shared for this curriculum he shared with me and Mark and we went to the links that he had provided and all the information is removed. So we can't, we can't move forward with <laughs> that. Because What's the original source? It's the data sets from uh, uh, NASA. Yeah. I know, I had, we had EPA um, like, graphs and data in our curriculum and the information is still out there. The URLs yes. just changed. They don't have climate change in them anymore. Yes, they don't. Biggest waste and of my time. For NASA, when you follow the link, it says this information has been archived. And then there's something going on or someone is a rebel over there because for few links, you can see like a screenshot of like 2016 data just before it was taken down. So somebody in some links has left like a screenshot that there was this data, but it's not there. Oh. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. <laughs> oh, geez. It's been put places somewhere. 
Yeah. So Mark says he can get to the same data through a GIS website, but it would be like a data series. It wouldn't be, I can't get to the visualization. So that's what it is. So, but isn't that, I felt that interesting and I felt like, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Ugh. We lost Sarah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Guess we had to pick our next book ourselves. I know. Seriously. I oh, who like... sent the list? Well, we have. Uh, you can maybe Johnny. You want to share the ones we had? Yep. And then we can. And then we can choose. We decided we wanted to go like hopefuler after that dark one, but I don't know if people are going to be into that or not. <laughs> Oh, this is not a clean energy to educating girls. Yeah, that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. This was, yes. Yeah, this was on the list last month. Um, just, it's great. It's really, really well done. And I actually haven't gotten too deep into it, so it'd be kind of cool to read that. Um, okay. Or well, yeah, I'd, I'd be more. interested to teachers ask about this. Like, what's the positive side? Yeah. We have a couple more. Before we harness the wind, um, about a young boy in Malawi that builds a wind turbine. There's three versions of this book. There's a picture book, there's a young adult or young reader's version, and then there's an adult version. All tell the same story, just in more words or less. Um, really hopeful, really beautifully done. I cried. You cry. You, you still have emotions. Come in academia. We'll crush them. <laughs> crush them. Uh, a long walk to water. Um, it's based on true story, or is a true story, uh, about two, um, two characters in Sudan, 2008 and 1985, and how their paths cross um, around water use, but in the end, climate change. Um, it's short. It's a quick read, um, but really really well done I read this with my homeroom and when I was teaching um, and then this last one the world we made I've started reading this one and it took me a little bit to like actually understand the premise but now that I do it's awesome um, so basically this environmentalist tells a story kind of like where he says part history part narrative describes key events technological breakthroughs and lifestyle resolutions that could give us the planet that we want and the world that we want but it's written you know from the future so in 2050 so it, was a, it took me a little bit to like figure it out it's, it's kind of an expensive book and it's pretty thick but it's really interesting that was yeah I Jenna has like uh, kidnapped all my books, so I can't really comment on all of them. However, <laughs> hey, I, I, I am finding all my books in the library over here. So, and they also have a digital version that I can just download or for this many days on my phone. Oh, super cool! I know. I mean, you know, Lincoln, Nebraska is special some way. I know. There you go. And we have a new Costco opening here. Like, oh, two weeks. Yeah. Honestly, why would you ever leave? Why would I ever move? I just discovered the earth is flat. And I, I just, I, we have a new Costco. And I have a book from library. There you go. <laughs> uh, my, my, in my office, second floor, person told me that. I wonder if we should, um, I wonder if we should send in the, like, email, like, recap of our little, oh, here comes Sarah, our, our webinar, uh, or maybe Sarah can choose. Yeah. I say we could do a vote, but. Let Sarah choose. Oh, let, 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 let's ask her son. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my laptop overheated and shut down. I know that. Uh, have you heard of any of those? Was the drawdown one from last time? Yeah, yeah. that's what, yeah. Okay. 
So basically, to, is there a hundred techniques and practices, and they are numbered one to a hundred in terms of what will take out the most CO two. So it's definitely not Clive by, um, but it's we're, we're trying to go a little more hopeful this this next month. Yeah, more of a solution yeah. focused. It's a great. It would be a great resource for a high school classroom too. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we looked at the cost of each of the books that we were looking at, and this one actually, this was 15 to $20 on Amazon um, if you were to purchase it. So it was actually, I mean, for it's pretty thick. I have it. I took it. Yeah. It's like it's all my books. All the books. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> show, our, show our page of it because it's so pretty. It's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. It shows the topic. And then just, I mean, this is what each topic looks like, kind of gives a picture um, and a summary of buildings and cities, green roofs. That's number 73 on the list. Um, But yeah, new sales for 22. Yeah, uh, that comes, that will align nicely with NGSS, coming up with innovative design solutions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other ones that we were looking at, um, Sarah, I don't know if you've heard of The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. There's actually three versions of this book, a children's illustrated book, a young adult reader, and an adult reader. Um, it tells the story of a boy from Malawi that builds a wind turbine. Um, it's, it's a pretty remarkable story. Um, a long walk to water. It's a quick read. Two, care, or two people, um, true story, um, and how their paths cross in Sudan. And that's like more elementary. Elementary, middle. Yeah. This is the other one. I don't know about how it, I mean, I want to read this one, but I don't know about doing it for a book club. It's a little bit out there. Yeah. So, what do we all think? Is that a Clify one? No. It's, it's, like I was saying, it took me a little bit to figure it out. But basically, it's an environmentalist that's telling the story as a character from 2050. And he's talking about all these things that we did between now and 2050 that led us to the world that we really want to have. Um, it's a beautiful book. It's, I mean, it's similar in, in how it looks to draw down. It's kind of a big book, lots of great pictures, and just kind of talks about all these things that we did to get to this point in 2050. So those are the books. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we lost her. <laughs> she couldn't she, pick one. She didn't <laughs> vote. <laughs> it's too much. Too much. <laughs> She's back. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> I chose one. Did you hear me? No. No. <laughs> well, too late. <laughs> um. If it's too much, we we can yeah. we well, could send a we could ask people to vote too. Yeah, well, I'm very interested in that drawdown one. Yeah. I mean, I might go through that regardless. Yes. Well, so maybe the world we made. Oh, that sounds, it's a cool book. That one is it's hard to find. You have to like if you yeah. want to read it, you got to get it like now. It's on Amazon. It was a little bit spendier. Um, Although they had some like cheap versions, it looked like. That's right. They had some used copies. Yeah, we could put it out and just email and just see what people what people think. And you know what? We could put out with it the um, essay that goes with it. Because it, the author of this book is the one that wrote that essay and like in order that I love to quote like the oh, world. Yeah. We, um, that was en- in Encia, which is like the same premise, essentially. Yeah, I can draft an email tomorrow and send it out. Let's kind of see what people think. Should we do it? It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, I promise like, I the, book. The, the layout of the book is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. I think it would it would lead to a lot of interesting discussion because of the the science and engineering 
around a lot of the, the work that he talks about. Cool. Let's do it. Hey. Here is that um, essay. That is like, um, that's sort of the premise of the book. And it has to do with cop, t being a coptimist, too. So. Cool. Yeah. Sarah, if you guys are starting to dig into like citizen climate stuff, I don't know if your class is interested in um, connecting with some of the people going to the international climate negotiations, but we're going to be doing webinars. Okay. Um, and they're going to be during the school day. Okay. So I assume you get our but soon how to follow them and stuff, but that'd be fun for them. Yeah. Cool. And there's one more resource I wanted to share. Um, yeah. uh, I attended the last teleconference for Clean Network Methods and Activities for Addressing Climate Change in the Classroom. And Is it the one with Beach? Yes. He, they discussed their book, which is Reading, Writing, and Making a Difference. And I do like the way that they are coming from a English com composition, narrative, framing the issue. So like getting to the nitty gritty of the way we talk, the way this issue is presented, and how, how if we stick to the facts, how should we frame that? I think that I like that a lot because as a teacher, as an educator, I want to be able to teach students that. It reminded me of that activity that you guys have in your curriculum, that is how to read data and you build it on step by step, right? Do you remember that activity? Mm, oh, the, um, the kit with the 3D objects, lesson five. I don't know if that 3D object, but where you go step by step and build an entire graph. And in, in a climate graph, you, you build that. Don't you have an activity like that? Maybe. With, with the true false statements, and then you have to figure out which heading goes to this graph or this data table. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's so, so the, the 3D, 3D object. object. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but in doing that activity, you, you have entirely taken, taken the, the whole politics and everything out of it because you're just teaching the epistemolo epistemology, like how do we know? How do uh -huh. I read this information? And if, this, if I know how to read it, then I can read any of these graphs or images that come my way and come with come out with my own conclusion i don't have to to be to be told what it is yeah and so i like that approach that teach these students the science and uh -huh. teach them how to read and talk about it uh -huh. and as an educator that should be a priority right right there yeah and it reminded me completely i thought of so much it's like and uh, like that's it reminded me of a lot of your activities i'll have to go back and uh look at that webinar but i have his book sitting on my desk i was just telling jenna today because he gave us sent us a copy to pre-read yeah yeah okay well you have to save it so, so right. someday i'll borrow it from you i know exodus is in it as an example of a book to discuss so we're on track <laughs> no and he so I like their partnership too. And one of them, Alan, has a blog that he invites teachers to write about their experiences when they're So like Sarah could reach out to Alan and say, here's my experience with my classroom. And he, he collects those experiences on his blog. I really cool. like, yeah, it was like an open diary. Um, 
Jonna, we could, Sarah, if you were um, willing to write a blog about the next book, we would order it for you and send it to you. <laughs> oh, goodness. No, no pressure. I've never written a blog before. <laughs> well, I think it's just about. a reflection. It's like it's a summary. That's all it is. What did you think? No pressure. Yeah, sure. how would you kind of imagine yourself <laughs> using it? We have, a, yeah. A couple if you put, if you say sure, we'll order it tonight and it'll be in the mail to you and it'll arrive at your house and you'll just have the book fair <laughs> to read. Okay. okay. She said yes. I did. She are said you, yes. Uh, are you around next month for sure though? We don't want to commit you to something you're not yep. around for. Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. I will send you a separate email with just kind of these questions. I mean, it really can be whatever you want. It doesn't need to be specific. Okay. But can you write your address in the chat box there and I will copy it and send it. Woo! So on Christmas, are you sending Christmas gifts too? I have a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. Sure. Right. Um, yeah, Jenny, you want to send that. Awesome. Cool. Well, Which book did we decide then? The world we made. The world we made? Yep. It's like Devardi's going to the library tomorrow. I don't yeah. think that one's going to be at the library. I, she said, because I'm such a good, what did she say? What did she call me? I'm a good patron. She would like, she can order some books if I say I'm a part of a book club. So I'm going to pull this connection over there and, yeah. and say, the climate generation wants you. Yeah. She, she should come to our book club. She won't. She what? knits. She's in a knitting circle. Oh. <laughs> only so many after school activities that you can partake in. We could knit on here too. <laughs> yeah. That's what's so I great about it. To, but. That's the next study. <laughs> All right. Well, Jenna has to get to aerial yoga and people have to send babies to bed and all that good stuff. But thank you. Thanks, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Get some yeah. of your pals to join in. Your teachers too. We've got fifty yeah. people registered. This, so yeah. I expect some You're some ready. months. I know. Well, some months there'll be people. Some months there won't. It's also to make us read stuff too. So you know, you could highlight that Sarah won the book. <laughs> yeah, that should be in the follow up email for sure. Like you, if you are the only one on the call, then you yeah. will. You get the book for next month. <laughs> and you get to write a blog. <laughs> you should, Jenna, word it as the guest blogger or the star blogger. I'm going to pump this up. Yes. <laughs> Sarah had no idea what she was getting herself into. So now, <sighs> seriously. All right, y'all. Thank All right. you. Have a Bye. lovely evening. You Have a great evening. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.